and all of the fallout which has happened during the week, which is an additional drama to the original story. I mean, it, it, it beggars belief, really. When I watched the first programme, I knew a fair amount about it. Um, but sometimes drama really brings it home. And uh, Toby Jones, as you know, if you watch it, which I'm sure you did, and wonderful Julie uh, Hesman Hart. So she was um, playing Suzanne, Alan Bates's uh, wife. And um, their story, the pace of the drama was was just performed beautifully. And when you finish the first show, I'm just kind of reliving it, really, to, to put ourselves into the situation and the emotion of one of the sub-postmasters who was... They, were, they have been treated, it's, it's absolutely abominable how they have been treated over the last 20 years. And at the end of the first show, when a few of these sub-postmasters who had been either fined or had had to give back money they did not owe, they had done nothing wrong, had all been told that you're the only one this is happening to after the new computer system um, made by Fujitsu, which was called the Horizon System, had been installed into all the sub-post offices. And at the end, um, Alan Bates had organised uh, a meeting, didn't know how many people were going to come to this meeting. And he said, now you will never be told you were the only one this has happened to again. And I mean, honestly, I just, I, as I'm sure everybody watching, just burst into tears. It was, you think, oh, right, it's all going to be fine now. And then you watch programme two. And it went into further detail. And the post office was kicking back. And they were, they were then, uh, taking criminal convictions, they were they were sending people to jail. Not just one person. If this had happened to just one sub postmaster, it would be a scandal. This happened to hundreds and hundreds of these very good people who had gone and set up a village shop and taken over the sub post office. I remember I live in Bristol, and um, when I lived in. Um, my previous house in Bristol, I used to go into the sub-post office in a little village called Fayland. Um, and, you know, you just sit, you, do, you know, you buy your bread, you buy your milk, whatever it is, and then just have a cake, homemade cake, and then have a little chat, you know, if you had a parcel to do. And, and then sometimes you just, like, nip around and I would sell a few stamps and all of that. And it was just, they are part of villages and communities and they're good people they're not asking for wealth they're just there day in day out doing an incredible job for us and then watching this you think you think of all those sub sub postmasters my cousin Sean she used to have a little um post office in Prostatin the town where I was brought up in in North Wales you know the, the, this isn't you don't go into being a sub postmaster with the hope to become suddenly a millionaire this isn't like going into this the city of London and trying to roll the dice on some shares and come out with unearned income it's not like that these are people who are there very early in the morning opening up doing that and then they were blamed then they were convicted because the post office has a system which the program told us is 300 years old where they can bypass a police force and bring a conviction so if you saw it my question to you really is how angry did it make you really how angry we now know that Paula uh, Venels, who was the CEO of the post office from 2012 to 2019, received on her uh, retirement from the post office a CBE and that that fine man, Alan Bates, was offered uh, an OBE for services to justice after that. And he refused it. He said, not while she has a CBE. I mean, he's, he is such a man of integrity. My question for you is, please give me a ring. Um, it's so important. Tell me what emotions you were going through when you read about it, when you watched the drama this week. I really, really want to know. Or 
If you know somebody who was affected or if indeed you were affected yourself, give me a ring on 0345 6060 Text me 84850 or send a comment to LBC. That's on Alexa or send me a comment on X also known as Twitter, obviously, to we oldies, at LBC. Right. First of all, I want to talk to someone I've kind of met through Twitter <laughs> this week since the uh, drama started. And uh, his name is Tony Downey. And uh, Tony answered a, a post that I put up and told me a little bit about his circumstances. Uh, because Tony was one of those sub-postmasters who went through hell. And uh, I'm delighted to say that Tony's on the line now. Hello, Tony. Hi, how are you? I'm all right. Most importantly, how are you? Yeah, all good, thanks. Surviving. Yeah, we're not victims, we're survivors. You, you are survivors, <laughs> Tony, and thank you yeah. so much for calling. I know when I DM'd you earlier, you felt a little bit nervous about about coming on because it, it, this drama has been... Well, what's your reaction to it? So, I mean, your summary there was amazing, but there's thousands and not hundreds. I don't think people understand how big this is in our scheme alone the historic shortfall we've got over three thousand people that have got claims in that's just in one of the schemes three thousand so, three thousand well there's two thousand eight hundred um i think there's another 50 this week uh, sorry this month and you know still 600 plus of those haven't got they've not been paid you know it's 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 way way bigger than, than people think. I can, mean, this is massive. Can I just stop you there, Tony? So there are different yeah. schemes that that, that yeah. people attach. So Alan obviously represented, Alan Bates, about 550, yeah. didn't he, sub-postmasters? Is that yeah, right? they're, they're, they're what the, the GLO scheme, they're called, they're, they're the people, the, the 500 and all that went to court and took the, right. the uh, post office to court. There's then uh, the historic shortfall scheme, which is for those that didn't go to court, yeah. but realised, oh, I'm one of those too. Um, and that's just going up and up and up. Um, Even I don't think... after all these years? It's Yeah, last, last <sighs> month, I think there was 60 new applicants, and it's averaging about 20 or 30 a month new applicants that are coming to the scheme and being accepted into the scheme. <sighs> so, you know, it, it's, it's massive. It's way, way bigger than, than people realise. And how many... I mean, how many post offices are there? There can't be that many. What, 60,000? Well, I think now there's, there? there's 11,000. I think at the time there was around about 15,000, 16,000. Um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me from what I've heard if 100% of them were were, were affected <sighs> in some little way. That's just my, my opinion. Yes. But, you know... Yes, but you've been example, living it, Tony. You've been living it. Yeah. Now, can you can you tell me your story? When did it start... You know, when did you become a sub-postmaster? Where? Just tell me your story. Yeah. So um, in uh, the, the simple story is um, we um, bought a post office in Hawkshead, in Cumbria. Uh, that was our investment. And this was in 2000, 2001. Um, we ended up selling that forced to sell that really in 2007. So when you say it was your office, investment, so what had you done before being a sub-postmaster? Well, before we were always looking to be self-employed and we'd, yeah. uh, we lived in Hawkshead and if anyone knows Hawkshead, it's an amazing little beautiful country place. You know, um, it's limited what um, self-employed businesses that you can yeah. you can get. We looked at a couple of post offices and they were a little bit small for what we wanted and then Hawkshead come up and we were just like, over the moon. I don't know whether you know Hogshead, but it's just, you know, an amazing place. It's just yeah. a place that, you know, it's full of tourists. It's just, you know, it's it's almost a, a sales business, if you were. Yeah. Um, and then the end of that was that um, we ended up having to pay 35.8,000 back into the system. Um, and then we were forced to sell, declare bankruptcy, moved away. I mean, there's a longer version to that, but that's the... The gist of so how did happened. it start? What, what was? Just tell so, me the emotions, really, because obviously you know you're a very honest man, and 
you know, everyone will see all of that now. But how did it start? Because I've never been accused of anything like that. And I'm sure most people listening have never been accused. No, me neither. Like it's, but, I mean, we were fortunate in, in that we didn't go to court. You know, we 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 paid the money back. So, but, yeah, we but were you, still you didn't pay it back, accused. did you? you? Because you didn't owe it in the first place. Yeah, that, that's true. Well, I suppose from day one, when the yeah. system came in, we had discrepancies. They were only small. Like um, what? £100, £200. Pounds, and I was told from, you know, the, the, the help desk and from my area manager, um, well, look, you know, it's probably just you getting used to the system, but, you know, you do have to pay this money back. Yeah. Um, it's in your contract. So I thought, well, you know, fair enough. I'm new to the business. I will keep paying the money back. And, and it was all, well, it wasn't fine. It was worrying that I couldn't get this right. Yeah. Um, so and you thought it was your fault because you were told it was your fault. And yeah, and to be honest, I, in hindsight, <laughs> I, I, I wish I had a question in the system. I didn't. I trusted the managers, yeah. the help line. I trusted that they were telling me the right thing. Yeah. And then in 2005, the hundreds then went to thousands. So we had a 6,000, a 3,000, a 7,000, a 900. It was just, yeah. Uh, uh, the auditors come in. Um, they found a shortfall of 3,000, and I was suspended immediately. And uh, yeah. Yeah, you were talking about the drama before. You know, it was just like the drama. These people came in with their suits. They took your keys. They closed the office. The queue, which was always at post offices. Yeah. People were, oh, what's happening, you know? Um, and, yeah, they were just asking me, where's the money gone? They they took the keys. I begged, <laughs> you know, what, what's happening? What, what's happening? Um, I can't imagine, you know, again, I say, everybody listening, you know, sometimes you have to try and put yourself in someone's shoes. And I think this is where the drama really brought it home. Yeah, it was, think, it was exceptional, really and, and, good. You know, where... It happened, and these innocent, innocent people, good people, good people, not just innocent, but actively good people, good citizens, yeah, yeah. were accused know, of no. this. And you feel so alone, and you're in a small little villagey town yeah. in Hawkshead. And it's not like anyone can be a postmaster. You know, there's a quite rigid thing to go through. Yeah. You have to be squeaky clean. You have to go through the interviews. You have to give your you know, business strategy. You know, it's not just anyone goes in <laughs> to become the sub postmaster. You know, you have to be approved. Um, and, and like you said about the series, I mean, it told some harrowing stories, yes. but there are so many more. I've met so many people. I mean, I, I, my story again is I'm a latecomer to this because I obviously was forced out of the UK because of this. Um, so I've spent 15 years not knowing anything about this. We lived in rural France, and it wasn't until I read oh, Nick Wallace's right. book, and I thought, "Oh God, this is this is me. This has happened to me." Um, and Nick Wallace, so, Nick Wallace is really the lead journalist on this. I was talking oh, to God, him just um, just amazing last week before the you know the drama came on ITV and yeah. um, I mean he's extraordinary he's written the book he made the panorama uh, yeah, program yeah. he made the series uh, you know it, he, he's the man and was consultant on the drama as well to get the series yeah, yeah. Right, yeah so I mean there's another thing you know with the book the, the, the drama amazing and it told these stories but yeah. there are so many more and the book goes a lot more into depth about so many more people. You know, I've met a lot of these people. And it's they've, just horrendous. And they've kept the money. This is the thing. It's like all I of know, this, these know. wrong payments. Uh, it'll be, what do you hope? I mean, you know, we'll, I'm going to be discussing this with a lot of people over the next hour, Tony, and thank you so much for, yeah. for telling us your story. No, no problem. really appreciate it. But what do you hope happens? I suppose... Personally, um, the reality is that they took this money from me, whether you want to call it. They stole it from me, whatever it was. They well, took they did. this money from <laughs> me. Fair. They made me severely ill. I was in psychiatric hospital. Oh, I had a nervous fair. breakdown. They forced me into bankruptcy. And the post office is still not accepting this. You know, I suppose. Still? So for me, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a, so difficult, really. I, uh, you know, um I think they, the post office, the board, whoever is making these decisions now, they need to hold their hands up. They need to be yeah. 
do the honourable honourable thing, admit. For, for me personally, you know, it's obviously that they did this. Yeah. And they need to admit that. But this is not isolated to me. And apologise so many... and pay you the money back yeah. and compensation the, the, and all this, of those this, things. So many, so many, so many others that you know the same. And again, I don't think the post office should be allowed now. Now that this is out, they shouldn't be allowed to drag their heels anymore. No, you know, people are dying before conversation. There are people out there that are literally unable to pay their bills. This was all caused by the post office. You know, they need to acknowledge what they've done, help these people, and yeah. stop making them fight any longer. You know, it's what the post office is saying is, oh, we want to make all this right. And, you know, we want to put these people back into to the position that they were. Yeah. The reality on the ground isn't that. You know, the reality is these people, including myself, are still fighting with the post office to try and get, you know, not not even as Alan Bates says, you know, not compensation. Maybe just what you took from me and just what you, uh, no, you know, no, no, you me should to have do. compensation, Tony. To go through that, well, they should compensate you. They really should. Yeah. They really, well, really should. Yeah. Tony, Maybe thank you. Should, but we're not even getting what, what, what would you, really? No. Well, anyway. stay in touch, whether that's on the old X or whether, uh, however it is, Tony, because we'd like to and know what happens. Thank you so much for all the support. The group are like, you know, over the moon that you're behind this no, and, and well, pushing the goals. It, we're all, you know... It, I hope that everybody who who has been treated so appallingly realizes that the nation is with them. You know. Yeah, I, I think we're well, we're starting to. We were yeah. alone, but now you know. Yeah. I think everybody's behind. I us. think so. Tony, sending all the best to you and uh, and your family. Thank you very much for for telling us your story. Thank you. And thank you, Carol. Cheers.